Recorded Books and RB Digital present What Linnaeus Saw A Scientist's Quest to Name Every Living Thing by Karen Magnuson Beale Narrated by Jonathan Todd Ross Introduction Shoup's Story A quote from Carl Linnaeus, Philosophia Botanica the Science of Botany, 1751. If you do not know the names of things, the knowledge of them is lost, too. The strange animal poked around the study, sniffing, searching. Carl Linnaeus watched for clues. Where did this little fellow fit in the animal kingdom? People had their theories. Was it a type of bear or badger? A canine? A cat? Or something else entirely? Nobody knew. At his desk, Linnaeus pored through books by other scientists for descriptions of the animal, its habitats, behaviors, economic uses, and names. One naturalist called the animal Volpi affinis americana, linking it to the American red fox. Linnaeus examined a published drawing of another animal, smaller, thinner, and with a longer tail. He realized they were related but that creature turned out to be a coati from South America. Linnaeus's animal was not native to Sweden. In fact, it was not native to any place in Europe. It had been brought over on a ship from North America. Most likely it was trapped by settlers along the Delaware River, where there once had been a small Swedish colony. The animal briefly lived the high life in the king's royal garden in Stockholm. Then, sometime in 1746 or 1747, Crown Prince Adolf Frederick gave the creature to Linnaeus, the 39-year-old world-renowned scientist at Uppsala University. The prince had one royal request. Figure out what it is. Other unusual animals would live in the university's gardens. Monkeys, parrots, peacocks but this one quickly became the family's darling and lived in the house. They called it Shoop. Having Shoop living right there in the house made him hard to ignore and easy to observe, perfect for the busy professor who noted, Back feet are longer and broader than the front. Walks on hind feet like a man or bear. Stands somewhat larger than a cat, almost as big as a hare, but shorter and closer to the ground, and with a rounded back like a bear. Hears poorly with small ears, and requires a shout to get his attention. Sees poorly. Possesses keen senses of smell and touch. Locates even the smallest crumb tossed to him, not by seeing it, but by sniffing and by patting the ground with his soft paws. Shoop liked to laze on his stomach and stretch out his legs. He was not interested in the shriveled-up plants from Sri Lanka that Linnaeus studied incessantly that summer. He'd rather have a ripe cherry. But as soon as Professor Linnaeus knocked the tobacco out of his pipe and tossed the cold pipe to the floor, Shoup rose up on his hind legs and hustled over to pick it up. Squatting on his haunches, he gently rolled the smooth pipe stem between his paws. He could do this for hours. He was a pickpocket and a thief, always on the wrong side of mischief. With slender, flexible fingers, and despite the inconvenience of not having thumbs, he managed to help himself to tasty treats. A sweet cake that Mrs. Linnaeus had hidden on top of the tall walnut cupboard. Eggs from nests in the yard. Terrified birds in the university's garden. Raisins and almonds right out of students' pockets. This pampered pet ate richly. Sugary cakes, meats, bread, porridge, apples, pears, lingonberries, cherries, strawberries, bird bones, raisins, crayfish, and eggs. Anything except raw or boiled fish, or foods prepared with vinegar such as sauerkraut. Shoup wandered through the professor's upstairs library. Books, shells, rocks, bones, and packets of seeds folded like Japanese origami, sat here and there. Hundreds of pressed plants glued onto paper were stacked on shelves labeled 1 to 24 in three towering gray cabinets. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?